Hey, everybody, welcome to the Ron Line Report. It's been a minute since I talked to this gentleman, but you know him very well. Former IFBB Pro League professional bodybuilder, much better known these days as a top contest prep coach. Please welcome from New York, George Farah. How are you, George? What's up, baby? Yeah. Look all cozy in there. Look safe from the cold today. Yeah. You know what, man? I mean, listen, I can't even explain to you. There's mountain of snow. I mean, if you see here in front of my house, yeah. look at this, how much I put of snow. <laughs> Oh, it, man, it's, it's nuts, man. I mean, upstate New York, you know, it's just like the craziest place, man. To, well, you, you, know. could, you could throw a rock from your backyard and get it to Canada, couldn't you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like Sarah Palin used to say she could see Russia from oh, her uh, okay. Let's not go there. <laughs> so, yeah. So uh, the first thing I want to talk to you about is some exciting news. Uh, last year was the pro debut of Blessing Awobidu after turning. He had turned pro back in 2017, waited a few years, made his pro debut, I thought he looked pretty good at the Indie Pro and New York Pro last year. But, you know, a lot of people were disappointed because so much, there were so many expectations on him. Uh, so he went back to the drawing board. And recently, I heard he was working with you as a coach and he's looking massive, looking good. But first question is, how did that come about? How did you and Blessing or Wobidu start working together? Well, you know, like it's, uh, it's just, a, I don't know, man. He, he reached out to me. And I always, he's one of those guys, I'm like, man, that guy could go places if he really have the right, you know what I mean, uh, people around them. Because he's, he's blessed. He is. <laughs> his, I mean, he does have an amazing, amazing roundness to his muscles, pretty shape, you know. And, and uh, you know, he reached out. He was in Dubai and he reached out to me because a bunch of my friends, he was talking to them. He's like, man, I'm just like, I can't. And one of my guys who just won the show, you know, like I helped him, we won the show. And he said, bro, why are you going so far? You know, your mentor is Kai Green. You know, who's his coach, blah, blah, blah. And that's how it came about. And he reached out to me and then we started putting things together, you know, and, and I promised blessing one thing, man. I told him, I said, listen, man, you know, I, yeah. Uh, I don't talk too much. I said, I let my action, you know, I'm not like the guy that tweets his own horn. I said, but you, you do what I tell you. I said, you're going to be big name. And, and I'm telling you, he will be, you know? Yeah. So did you were at, uh, I think you were at New York pro last year, right? Yes. Okay. So what, what were your impressions of him? Cause we were all waiting to see that was, were you at Indy too? I don't think you were at Indy the week before. No, it wasn't Indy. Okay. So what were your first impressions when you finally saw blessing? Cause like everyone else, you must have been hearing about him for quite some time. Well, I hear all the talk, you know, and the, the stuff. He's a funny individual. Mm -hmm. So, you know, everybody likes them because he does have that beautiful attitude towards life, the personality that goes with it. And uh, we, I really expect him to be <clears throat> much better athlete, sorry. But the thing is, I, 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 you know, from my, you know, point of view, from what I saw, I thought he would look a little slender from where he started. You know what I mean? Yeah. It looked like he lost some muscles and stuff. But I mean, it happens with a lot of people. You know, he, he, need, he needs to get to know his own body too. You know what I'm saying? Just can't just blame it on this coach and that coach or whatever. I'm not like that. You know, I love everybody. I think everybody's doing a great job. But with blessing, I think <clears throat> it's about chemistry. And I don't know. I feel like he found it. I don't know. Between me and, you know, and him. We have a great talk, like we, you know, we chat. And I don't know, I, 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 I don't know, man. I feel like very positive about it. You know what I mean? I think he's going to be big. I think he's going to be a big name. Yeah. So, you know, he did. I remember it, he was posting progress pictures last year leading up to the show and, and a lot of videos and everything. And I was so amazed at the fullness, the density on him. And then, like you said, at the show, it didn't, he had lost a lot of that. You yes. Know, what's, what have you guys, was it a peaking issue or, you know, with him? What would you do differently? What will you, you do know, differently? You, know, you see the problem, Ron, a lot of coaches, you know, I mean, I remember, <clears throat> I remember me and Jay Cutler talking, you know, believe it or not. I'm sure Jay, if he heard this, he'll remember it. He was telling me, he goes, he goes, you know, I don't like coaches that they think, you know, cut carbs and more cardio, that this is how you're going to get in shape. That's not how you get in shape, you know? And certain coaches, I think because, you know, they, they don't have the, I don't know, they, they don't have the background or they don't know how human body operate. You know what I'm saying? Mm. They think this is always the case. Okay, man, let's cut carb and just increase the cardio. They usually end up in disaster. You know what I'm saying? Especially the last two, three weeks, you know, 
And I have said it before, Ron, I think, you know, when me and you were talking, yep. listen, if you're not ready two weeks before the show, you're not going to be ready. Right. So to me, now I'm going to tell you one of the things that we talked about, you might remember. I always said the last two weeks, if you're going to increase your cardio and all that stuff, you know what I'm saying? Yep. There is something wrong. Instead, I stop cardio. With, with all, all my guys, usually they end up with zero cardio two weeks out. Wow. Why? I'm going to tell you why. The reason why, because you don't want your body to get used to, especially that last two weeks, it's, or you're already you know, doing 10, 12 weeks, whatever, like hard cardio, dropping carbs, adding carbs, manipulating this. And then now you go two weeks before the show and you keep the cardio. And then a lot of the lot of the people you find out at the peak week, they said, Oh man, you should see me two days before the show, or mm. or you should see me after the show. Well, you know, I want to see you at the day of the show. Right. So what happened, Ron, is people they start adding the carbs. And as a result of them doing cardio, their body do not recognize all that glycogen you're putting in because it's used to all this time burning fat for energy you see what i'm saying yeah. so now you put the cardio you put the carbs in there his metabolism actually gets faster and you see him they're eating they start sweating and stuff because you know they're keeping the cardio in so you, their body don't know what to do with carbs so the reason why i stopped it two weeks out so let your body get used to carb again you know what i mean not burning you know the, the, the you know uh, your energy as fat for fuel you know what i'm saying yeah. used to add the carbs because what you do, you know, a lot of the people that work with me, they'll tell you, I don't like carb depleting or like carb loading or whatever, like they call it. Yeah. What I like to do is, you know, everything like an airplane, man, nice and slow. You know, if, if you go too fast, either way, you're going to crash. Hmm. So I, I like to do it, you know, like, you know, okay, listen, I look at him. I mean, like I said, anybody that have done his homework, right, for 12, 14 weeks, you don't need to carb deplete. You're already freaking carb deplete. You know, mm -hmm. you're killing yourself. So now maybe it's time to start adding a little carbs, you know, as the gate and as the day goes by, you know, like each and every day. And we all know bodybuilder, man, it's like the stock market. You got to look at somebody every day, sometimes every couple hours. Otherwise you crash quick. <laughs> so this, this is why I don't like cardio at the end. You know what I'm saying? And this is, this is one of the things that a lot of people do. And then they start, man, I gave him, you know, two cups of rice each meal and this, and then he's still losing weight. Well, mm -hmm. guess what? Because his body's not used to carb. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Not used to taking the glycogen. So that, that's one of the problems. Yeah. You know, I, I remember talking to so many athletes when they started working like branch years ago, when he started working, he said, man, I'm doing so much less cardio than I normally would. I think he was doing like 20 or 30 minutes a day, walking his dogs. He said, I'm eating more carbs. You know, most people would look at that, that combination. You just started this guy who's in contest prep, eating more carbs, doing less cardio. It seems like there's, how is he possibly going to get any leaner? So how can, you know, explain it to those of us who don't get it. How does a bodybuilder or like a branch or anybody get leaner when you, when you apply that formula to them? Well, what happened, Iran? Each pound you're you're putting, you know, because let's let's not, you know, go around the bushes. I mean, we know all what you're doing. There, these guys using anabolics, and the reason why it's called anabolic because it create anabolism in your body. So start taking the food and anabolize it better, you know. Versus when you're not taking anything, you eat it, it comes out. You know, your body don't really anabolic that much of it. So what happened now, every pound of muscles we build, that's why, like you see a lot of my guys, you know, I don't, I don't let them go, you know, out of shape in the off season. I don't like that because, you know, like I always say, if you don't have your abs shown in the off season, don't call yourself a bodybuilder. You know what I mean? Seriously, I don't like these guys. They put 15, 60 pounds and then what? Then what? You know, then you're going to go to the show looking terrible. Because remember, the more fat you add, and now you're going to diet down, the more muscles you're going to lose as a result. You know what I'm saying? So you're not just losing the fat. So why do that? Stay in shape. You know what I mean? Within 15, 20 pound maximum with your, you know, show shape. And what would happen? So a lot of the guys, they started with me, like, for an example, Branch, he was like, I think around the 250 mark or whatever, you know. 
So we start around 235 because he's clean and everything. And we end up like 240 or something, you know, you gain weight for the show. And every time you gain one pound of muscles, you know, your metabolism go up by 2%. Now you gain 10 pounds of muscles, that's 20% faster. So just by sitting and talking to me and you, you're burning a lot more calories. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. That's why if you notice, you're a bodybuilder. I don't know if you if you did any gear, but you ask anybody that, you know, you know what I'm saying? Anybody okay. that done <laughs> You know, you, you know what I'm saying, Ron. Yeah. Anybody that's on gear, you see you can get away with a lot of stuff while you're on the gear. Yeah. Versus when you're not on it, you eat anything, you turn fat. Right. And this is that's why it's called anabolic. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's why I rely on them building muscles, you know, and as a result, they're gonna lose the fat. So why kill them while they're dieting? You know what I'm saying? You know, like honestly, I never remember any of my guys doing them more more than 45 minutes you know, cardio, the prepping, and usually that goes down to nothing, you know, at the end, towards the end, you know what I'm saying? So let's get back to blessing for a second. How would this apply to him? Because is he, are you keeping him leaner than he normally would be uh, at this time? I don't even know, yeah, if, yeah, does he have a yeah. show? Yeah. What, what? You, can tell, you can tell blessing, blessing's already lean, you know what I mean? Yeah. At 300 pounds, you can see his abs and everything. So why kill him? Like I said, man, you know, anybody can lose weight. Anybody, you know, my mom, if she cut her, you know, her food intake, you know, she'll, she'll be in deficit, she'll lose weight. But that's not, that's not the secret in bodybuilding. And bodybuilding is lose the fat while keeping the muscles. That's when, you know, season, you know, uh, coaches know what they're doing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That, that's, that's when, that's what separate, you know, certain people from the others you know what i'm saying because my god the, the coaches are like dime a dozen these days man I'm, oh, we're, gonna, we're, we're gonna get into that in a second but last question about uh do, does does blessing have a do you guys have a show in mind yet or are you just really getting to know each other and, and you know getting no, a good no, spot we, do. we we have we have a show in mind we have 12 weeks for the show so you figured it out <laughs> i'm gonna say new york pro is that 12 weeks away so no. Ar okay, Arnold is March twelfth, and that's five weeks away from. Hey, Wisconsin. he did Indy. How did he do in Indy? So that's what we're doing. Ah, uh, okay, okay. And I think it's probably again close to New York, so he might do the same two shows again. Uh, we'll we'll see. Yes, most likely. But like I said, you know, I, I I'm the kind of guy if you do a show and win it, I don't want you to go to another show because you want to give the chance for other athletes to to oh. qualify. And I'm not going to take blessing to place. I'm taking them to win. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting you bring that up because, you know, like Ian Valliere, people were mad at him last year because he won, I don't know, what did he win, Chicago? Or no, he won uh, Tampa. He won one and then he kept going. He kept winning Texas. And it was like, well, you should have, he should have left, let Kukla win that and he could have qualified for the Olympia. But, you know, you could argue it both ways. But yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> people want to do it to, to get their face out and stuff. But, I mean, with me, I don't know. That's how I always advise everybody. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Except if you're doing like a tour, like the Arnold and stuff week back to back, then of course, you know, sure. you know, you're not smart if you're not going to do them all. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, especially when they were a week apart, you do, you do the one in Ohio and then a week later in the Brazil and a week, you know what I'm saying? So you got to do those because that's a money making for you. And I don't blame you if you, if you're a winner, you know what I'm saying? Sure. So last blessing related question, you were, you saw him last year, you saw him on stage and you were probably as a coach thinking, I would want to bring him in looking this way instead. So how would you have him in your uh, ideal situation looking differently as opposed to how he looked last year at the Indy and the New York Pro? Well, he need, he, you know, he need to be blessing and blessing known with his fullness and roundness. When he lose that fullness and roundness, he doesn't look pretty. Mm. you know and we all saw him he's almost like a stringy looking i mean he was in shape but i think if he was popping things would have been a lot different and this is the okay yeah because i mean i think there were i think it was only two weeks between those shows and he he tried to fill out i don't know if he did it on his own or or chad was guiding but he tried to fill out as much as possible for new york and he he was much fuller the condition was starting to go away but you did see that he a little more of the blessing that we know and love the, with those crazy round full muscles. Um, uh, let's get into coaching for a second, because last year we had 
we had a rough year. We lost a lot of people in this industry. It was, it was alarming. It was scary. And people started talking about coaching and protocols that coaches for better lack of a better word, prescribe, advise, recommend to their clients. And some people were even coming out with diuretic protocols, you know, screenshots of this is the protocol that this guy gave me. It was a lot of women. And, you know, I was seeing some crazy things like 10 days on aldactone and the last three days on lace, just insane things that on paper, they look, they looked insane. I don't know how anybody would look at that as an athlete and go, okay, all right, I'll do that. Um, so the first question I have is, you know, how much accountability does the coach have to have their client's health in mind versus, you know, you're paying this coach as an athlete to make you win, not to make you the healthiest person up there, the man or woman up there, but you're paying this person to guide you to a win. So it's a fine line. How do you as a coach look at that situation? Uh, you, you know what? Let me give you a lot of experience I encounter myself so you'll understand how I feel, okay? Yeah. I got a guy came up to me and he said, hey, George, I need you to help me. I said, okay, you know, I need blood work. Because no, no, everything's good. I said, yeah, but I don't work with you without blood work. So please send me blood work, right? Ron, I'm not kidding you. His creatinine is 2.1. You're supposed to be 1.1, 1.2 if you're muscular. 1.3, either 2.1. His GFR is less than 60. He's telling me his blood work. I'm like, bro, that's not a good blood work. So mind you, I took him, tried to fix it as much as we can. We dropped it down. You know, it was around like 1.4. But I told him, listen, that's something you got to leave. You, know, you got to live with for the rest of your life. You got to be careful. You know, you, you got to stay away from red meat, no creatine, none of that stuff, no dairy products. As a result, the guy, he was really shredded. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Now he probably because I'm not giving him a lot of protein, he lost his little fullness. He doesn't, he doesn't have that full. And he's a little awkward. Like I said, I don't want to say names. He competed, you know, he ended up in sixth place. Uh, he was upset. He was very angry. He said, you know, he should have won that show if he was bigger, if I would have listened to him. I said, listen to you, why? He goes, I needed more protein in this. I told him, I said, you don't understand. I'm keeping your health in mind. You know what his response was? This is honest to God truth. He said, I don't care if I die after the show, if I would have. I'm like, what? So you know what I told him? I said, man, God bless you. You know, the money you gave me, you can have back because he gave me zero because he's a pro. So he didn't give me money to begin with. I said, so I'm all set. You, you know, I'm the wrong coach. I said, if that's how you think, I'm the wrong coach. See, the, the, what I need, man, I need, I need people to, to remember me as like, wow, this guy kept us healthy. I don't really care about how many trophy and how many winners I create. That means nothing to me. What means to me is to have somebody like Dexter, the most winning guy ever in the history, breaking all records, right? Yeah. And 50 some years, 53 and we talk every other day or every week. I love you, brother. You know, he sent me his blood works perfect. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like, hi, he sent me his blood work is perfect. Dude, that's what I want. You know, mm -hmm. like a branch, like, like Tony, like the guys that work with me, man, they always become like family. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Sadly, sadly, and they must remember, coach must remember. They don't have a green light to prescribe. First, you're not a doctor. You know what I'm saying? So you got to be careful. And that copy-paste bullshit, man, it doesn't work for anybody and everybody. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And honestly, Ron, I see one of my, I mean, this is no joke. I see some of my, my, you know, plans. They're freaking all over the world. Like, you know, that guy, I'm, I, you, know, he, you know, I'm working with him. He's like... He's somewhere from, I don't know, somewhere in uh, near, near uh, Vietnam or some, right? So okay. I told him, I said, who gave you that diet? I'm looking. He, I said, that's my diet. I'm, you, know, I, you know, yourself, you're, he said, oh, you know, I was working with so-and-so or whatever. I said, I said, but, you know, like, he goes, oh, yeah, and he gave me this. And there's no codfish here. 
You know, I said, no shit. Like, I know there's, <laughs> but I know it's my diet. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what you wrote, man. So they copy and paste it. And, and, and this has been happening all over. Listen, there's the good coaches out there. They're probably about, you know, you can count them on one hand. You know what I'm saying? The rest of them, they're all in, in, in remember what I mean when I say good coach, it doesn't mean that, oh, his guys are winning or all oh, his girls are winning and stuff. Because as we saw one of those coaches that his girls were winning, he was freaking killing them because they are they two, three came out. They have kidney problem. They're on dialysis. A couple of them died. That doesn't make you a good coach. Good coach is working with people and everybody's healthy at the end of the day. You know, we need, we need to remember something, man. This is the, the sport we all love. We got to keep it safe. You know what I'm saying? And that's why the people who's in charge, they're always in contact with me. And they have some, you know, we, we have like basically respect for one another because they know what I do. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not, listen, I'm not saying, I, I will never talk about any coach. All the good name coach, they really have probably about the same attitude as me. I'm talking about there's so many new coaches now and everybody goes to the gym. They haven't even opened a freaking nutrition book and they're nutritionists all of a sudden. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and you know what it is, Ron? It's so funny that I used to be like, you know, like, because, you know, I, I study nutrition and chemistry and stuff. I used to think I'm very smart, right? I'm like, oh my God, you know, like, man, I know more than people. Let me tell you something, man. Doing my PhD, studying for my PhD, it was a freaking mind blowing. Because now, here you are, you're doing your doctorate and you, you, you study about hormones and you study about, you're like, oh my God, I was dumb. So the more you study, the more you read and the more you educate yourself, the more you realize you don't know it all. Like some people think, you know what I'm saying? So I'm, you know, like, honestly, I want all those guys. I'm not saying they're not going to become good coaches or they're not, but be careful, man. You know, be careful. We only have one life. One time on this planet. That's it. One time. So if you take somebody, you know, and like that guy, he tells me, oh, I would have rather died than taken six. I'm like, are you freaking kidding me with this guy? Wow. Is he for real? I Ron, this is no joke. I'm telling you, I swear on everything. I, I believe you. That, that's his exact text to me. I said, bro, I'm the wrong person. I said, I'm the wrong guy that you work with. Here I am for almost a year working with the guy, keeping his kidney perfect, worked on his GFR. His doctor was so happy. His doctor even contacted me. He goes, hey, can I send you other people? I said, no, 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 I'm all set. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't want to help. But, but, but seriously, like people, they need to realize, man, you're only, you only have one shot on this planet. You know, one shot. And, you know, I have learned something from somebody. My last seminar, I was overseas just now as you and we spoke, me and you. You know what I told somebody? He was, he kept talking about, oh man, you know, like money, money that makes champion this. I said, listen, your health is everything. So we're talking about health. So finally I had to stop, you know, and I told him, I said, listen, how about I give you a million dollars? I said, you know, let's make it a couple million. Okay. You think you're going to be happy? He goes, oh, I'll be great. I said, but you won't wake up tomorrow. You're dead. So you have $2 million, but you, he goes, Oh man, I never looked at it this way. You know, like that's people, they don't look at things this way. You know what, George, so, you, know, you, you have a different perspective than I, I don't think most people have a real concept Ron, of immortality. You, you know, were shot, you, know, you, had, I, you were pronounced dead, weren't you years ago? Ron, listen, I'm going to tell you, I'm coming to this, okay? The reason why I feel this way, listen, I have a friend of mine, he came, you know, me, me and my wife, as you know, she's a medical doctor. And I'm an integrative medicine. So <clears throat> we have a nice office, you know, practice. I have a guy, he came to me, I helped him. I'm fixing his kidney, his liver, this and that. He brought his dad with, with him. I looked at his, you know, his, you know, he told me, can you look at dad's blood work? I said, yeah, I looked, I said, you know, I said, sir, you know, you're only 65 years old. You, your blood work does not look good. He said, yeah, well, I drink and this. I said, but your cholesterol is very, I mean, it's almost 400. You know what I mean? Wow. So anyway, he said, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not kidding you, Ron. This is no joke. An hour later, 
I went, my wife, she liked, you know, uh, she liked those um, coffee, the tall coffee from McDonald's. Yeah. So I went to get her because it's next door to us in the same basically plaza, you know, down the street. So I took a walk. I went there. That same man, I told him he need to watch his food. He's eating two Big Macs or whatever. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. I looked, I'm like, but you know why? You know why, Ron? Because he didn't lay like me in bed. He didn't spend a year the first time and a year that last time when I had cancer, you know, a almost a year in the hospital laying. Listen, my mom loved me, my dad, my brothers, my sister, my kids, my wife. But life goes on for all of them. You know, my wife have to see other patients. My kids have to go to school. My mom, she had to take care of my dad, my brothers. So, you know, who's laying in bed? Me. Day in, day out. And the same freaking little room in the hospital. I'm like, oh, my God. You know, if anything I learned from that is I want to pay it forward. I want to help people to never be in that place, man. So I beg people sometimes, like, please, it's not, you know, it's not the more the better in our, you know, in, in, in our sport. You know what I'm saying? You, you know, Branch one time said it in an interview. They're talking to him about, like, how much he used. That's when he took 2009, he took second at the Olympia. I know what he came and told me, and he said it in an interview. He said, George, I took more stuff for the team national than you gave me for Olympia. And you took second. So, so what that tell you? That people are overusing stuff. Man, listen, I don't care if you take Tylenol, you know, for your headache or for whatever. If you overuse Tylenol, your liver is going to be damaged. We know that after, you know, more than 3,000 milligram a day, you can. So aspirin is, is how long it's been. If you take too much aspirin, you got an ulcer, you might have bleeding ulcer, you could die from it. So everything they're doing, it's not necessarily is the right thing. Man, I see people, they, they can't even win a freaking local show. And I look at the regimen like, holy crap, what is that? You know, dude, you're in your 20s. What are you thinking? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so I, this, this is very sad. This I is saw, very sad. I don't, I'm not going to give this guy any credit because I don't want people checking out the video, but he's a, he's a young guy and he's a coach and he made a video and he gave a protocol on the YouTube video, which that's insane, with a list of all the drugs that he would have someone take for and all the times. And it was like, it was like eight or 10 shots of different things a day you know, different peptides and steroids and ins IGF this and insulin that it was crazy. And I'm thinking if he's work, even at the, if someone's at the level of an Olympia competitor, this would be a lot, but I can imagine there are guys doing local shows and they're slamming grams and grams and 12, 15 different drugs every day to get ready for, a, you know, the Mr. West Kennebunk or something. Some I don't, show. Ron, I don't get it, man. We, we love that sport. We need to protect it. We need to take care of it. You know what I mean? I, I wish, I wish they, they, I don't know that we need to send some type of message, man. Seriously, we have lost a lot of good people and, you know, not necessarily is just the drug. It's the style. It's everything. You know, the problem with bodybuilders, you know, like, you know, like when somebody worked with me, they said, man, that's so different because you know, the bodybuilder thinks, okay, rice and chicken, potato and steak, rice and chicken. But when they come to me, it's like colorful, you know, raspberry, blueberry, strawberry, bananas, avocado, a lot of salad, a lot of greens. You know why I do those things? Not because, oh, I just want it to be colorful. No, because those are all antioxidants. Those are something they're going to help you. If anything, I learned from myself getting sick. I'm like, holy crap, man. I'm not doing this to anybody. You know what I'm saying? I mean, mind you, people will tell you for a long time ago, I have an article on MD and I said, listen, fruit is dessert. You know, fruit is awesome. You know, instead of using sugar and stuff, and this before I even had cancer. So imagine now how strongly I advise against, you know, dumb stuff and people like rice and chicken, rice and chicken, rice and fish, rice. Dude, have fun. Enjoy yourself. Stop taking that stupid Tupperware with you and take your wife and your kids and go sit down in a restaurant. You know what? It's not going to hurt you if you have, instead of, you know, grilled chicken breast, half a piece of fish. 
or instead of fish, have a grilled piece of bread or, or a piece of steak. It's not going to kill you, you know what I mean? Especially if you're 16 weeks out, whatever, from a show. I mean, my God, I'm, I'm almost ashamed of myself, man. Like how I used to carry my Tupperware and go everywhere with the jug of water. It's like freaking, we live in like third world country. There's no water. And there's water there. I didn't Man, know. You know what I'm saying? Look, oh, you left. The gallon, you know, I used to carry the gallon. I'm jug. saying it, dude, because I'm talking from my heart. You know what I mean? I don't want the young generation to make that mistake. Man, I want them to live their life. Ron, I'm going to tell you something, man. I'm 50 years of age now, and I look, I'm like, I didn't do much because of bodybuilding. I didn't do much in my life. So that's why right now, you know, I don't know if you saw, but that big house I built and stuff, I'm, you know, I'm, you know, I'm smart because I have other venue and I made a lot of, but, but my whole life was work, 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 and bodybuilding, bodybuilding, bodybuilding. And now I looked, I'm, oh my God, I almost died. My, my kids didn't see much. So that's why now you're asking me like, where are you? I'm traveling here. You know, that's why I was in England. Then I'm France. Then, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you know, in on the 15th, I'm going to Egypt. Like, dude, I, I just want to have fun, man. Life is too short, you know? So my advice to all those guys, listen, first of all, if you got a coach, you know, and if he doesn't ask you for blood work, that automatically should be like a no-no. You know what I'm saying? Red now, flag. Yeah. You know, exactly. Now, if your coach, it's smart, you know what I mean? You know, it, he will automatically ask for that. And you know, he can read it at least. A lot of those coaches, they might ask you and they don't know what the freaking they're looking for. <laughs> you know, it, 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 it's so funny because I tell you what, you're going to laugh. There's a lot of coaches. They send me blood work of their clients, you know, which is like, sometimes I tell them, I'm like, why are you coaching? Why are you taking somebody if you don't know as simple as things about human body? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So this is this is what you got to be aware of. And another thing, like I said, man, make your life colorful. Enjoy your life. Don't take it out on people. Life is too freaking beautiful, man. And like I said, we only have one shot of it. One shot, Ron. One shot. You know yeah. what I mean? You're coming and you're leaving and that's it. I think you can help a lot of people by answering this question. How many athletes did you work with over the years? Don't You don't have to name anybody, but how many of them cut their dosage down dramatically when they started working with you and looked at least as good, maybe even better than they had on the much larger doses of drugs. Hey man, you know, it, all what I can tell you is freaking Ty Green. Mm, okay. His, his like went to nothing and his food too. You know, he used to have so much protein and stuff. You know what I mean? And when we cut it down, all of a sudden, his body like, boom, he blew up and he looks so round and so pretty. So, you know, and, and this is just to name one person, like, you know, because Kai's like my brother. He know that, you know, I, I mean nothing but respect. But he even told me, he said, George, man, people don't understand, you know, how much a write off on your back. Because when somebody goes on the stage, you know, it's a great to have somebody that got your back, man. You know what I'm saying? It's not like, okay, well, here, take this, take that. Oh, it's not working here. Take more. Take No, that's not how it works. That's not bodybuilding anymore. That's mm -hmm. not bodybuilding. Bodybuilding is about beauty, about health. I mean, my God, you know, a lot of those people, they look, they, they look up on us. They're like, man, look how healthy that guy, because they have the six packs and stuff. But at the same time, if they really look at their blood work, a lot of the bodybuilders, a lot of the pros, you know what I'm saying? They can't even get a life insurance. And I can guarantee you that because I was one of them. Yeah. You know what I'm trying to say? And I'm talking about myself. So there's no reason for this. No reason to overdo things. You can still look amazing. Listen, I will never, ever sit down here and be hypocrite and say, oh, well, don't do steroids. No, I did it. I did everything, but what I'm trying to say is I learned a lot, especially with me being shot, having one kidney. You don't need too much of stuff. You know what I'm saying? You don't need a lot of stuff to, to grow. You know what I'm saying? It's called anabolic, but if you take anabolic and you don't have the second most important thing to support your, your journey, which is the food, doesn't matter how much you take anabolic, you're going to look stringy and you're going to look sickly. You know what I mean? Because you're sick on the inside. 
So that's all I'm trying to do, man. I'm trying to pay it forward for the sport we all love. And I want everybody to be healthy. I don't want them to lay in bed the way I did. Yeah. Yeah, I want to end this with some, I want you to confirm or deny some George Farah trivia that I've had kicking around in my head for years now. I think you were the only 210 pro champion in the sport of bodybuilding, pro bodybuilding, I have to be. Because here's what I think happened. When they, they started a lightweight division, I believe, correct me, the first show was the weight limit was 210. 202. You, was it 202? Are you sure? 202. Okay. Cause, and you won Eight. that, right? Weren't you? The, it was, a, was it the uh, Texas Europa, Dallas Europa or something? Yeah. Yeah. So you were actually the first 202 winner in, in the IPB, correct? Well, I don't think I was the winner. You won no, one I, of those shows. Are you sure? No, no, no. I think you know who won that show. Hold on. I think Flex Lewis won that show, if I'm not no, mistaken. No, 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 no. Who won that show? I don't know, man. You know, I, I don't. I you think asked, you did, George. I'm pretty sure it was. You don't remember winning no, a show? No. <laughs> <laughs> I won one show and I went to the Olympia, but that wasn't. I don't think Europa was. Uh, because I, think I was, remember they had the 202 division, but I think right before that, the very first attempt, uh, I'd have to look, I'd have to do some research, but I think it was like they randomly came up with 210. Let's have a 210 division. And 202. I thought, was it? No, I remember, I remember 202. And I remember you winning was one of those two shows. Was after that 212. Okay. So, but I'm, I thought you were the first winner because I remember. Hey, uh, if you want me to be the first winner, I'll be the first. I, I, know, know. I, I know it wasn't Flex. Hey, Flex wasn't winning shows right away when he started. He wasn't. He was, he was, like, 80, he was like 185. Flex. He wasn't winning anything in the very beginning. Flex. Who? Flex, oh, Flex, Flex, Flex Lewis. Flex. He plays. Yeah. No, no, no. I, I, you're right. I did beat him at that show. And that was the last time I competed against him. And then next thing, he's like Mr. Olympia with such a beautiful bag and the glutes and stuff. He owned that. 212. Oh. He owned it. Yeah. You know? Lex was awesome. Well, while I got you on the subject, I guess one more question. How do you think he'll do in the open? You know what? I think he, listen, he used to beat Hadi Chopin, you know? Hadi is a great champion. And he beat Hadi a couple of times. A couple of times I thought, you know, actually not a couple of times. One time I thought Hadi should have him. Hmm. But, you know, it was like, you know, he was a Mr. Olympia. And you know, probably, you know, it's hard to take it away from him. You know, you got to knock the champion. It was a close. But I thought Hattie was like, you know, a little sharper. Yeah. So if he comes in, because remember, Flex always have to like literally eat like a bird to stay at 212. And I know that for a fact because we talked, me and them, and me and Neil were very, very close friends. Neil is an awesome guy too. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Flex always, so if he, let, if he let him lose, so even if he's like 10 pounds, but with the same condition, he's going to be very dangerous. Yeah. Yeah, I think so too. I mean, yeah. I, I said no worse than top. My prediction was no worse than fourth place. And a lot of people said, what kind of crack are you smoking around? Can I get some? Because that's you. Yeah, but but I, I stand by that. The problem now, he has to qualify. No, he'll get the special invite. I'm very, I'm pretty confident he'll get you the think? special invite. Why wouldn't so. he? They, they can give a special invite every year if they want to. Kai, yeah. got, Kai got it two or three times, didn't take it. They gave, it to, uh, they gave it to Cedric. He took it. They gave it to Rami. He took it. Yes. Yeah. I yeah. think he's, I, I would give him. Maybe he'll get an invite and he surprises us all. You yeah. never know. He might be like Rami. He takes it and wins it. <laughs> stranger things. We've both been around. We've seen stranger things in that happen. You know, right? you know what I like about, I, I like what, I like what Mr. Mayan is doing that they never done before. That you know what they're giving it to the person who deserve it now. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like, listen, this past Olympia, it could have went both ways. Like, seriously, would have been either way. I would have been happy because Brandon looked amazing. Honestly, he looked spot on. He's pretty. You know, he didn't have the legs to match maybe his upper, but he still. I thought it was like very complete, and he looked really good. You know, Rami was a little over dominated. You know. Like he came in, I thought he could have lost it, you know, in the, in the prejudging on Friday. Yeah. But then on Saturday, it was fixed a little better. And, and then he ended up victorious. But, it, you know, like I said, it could have been either way, man, you know. Yeah, I mean, fun. I like I like the way Brandon looked, you know, on, on Friday. But then I liked Rami the way he looked on Saturday. So, well, I mean, 
apples and oranges. Brandon's got a very pretty, pretty physique. Beautiful. Uh, Rami, you would never use the words beautiful or pretty to describe Rami, but massive. Massive monster. Yeah, as I said. He's, he is. Freak. He's, he's a freak. You know, what are you going to do? So, <laughs> well, uh, George, that's all I had for you. I appreciate you so much doing this on a weekend with oh me. Taking time, the time. Anytime for these viewer and for you guys. And you know, Steve is my brother, so. Yeah. I will never say no to you guys. So now we know Indie Pro, guys. That's when we're going to see Blessing of Wobby Doo on stage next. This man, George Ferrer, handling the prep. So I'm very excited to see what you two can put together. He's got yes. so much potential. I would love to see more of what I feel is the real blessing on that stage. Listen, so. to me, if if we went there and, and then dominate, I don't want to just go there and win. I want him to go there when I took Kai to the to. To, I don't know if you remember when I took him to the a New York Pro and he walked out and everybody looked at me like, what the hell? Is and that's what I want to do with Blessing, honestly. That's my plan, you know? Yeah. Oh, I like that. That's Those are exciting shows when somebody just walks out and it's like, okay, that's yeah. it. There's your winner right there. <laughs> you know, that, that's how with somebody in that structure and that big, he's supposed to be like, man, you know, light out. Right. Cool. All right, brother. Cool. All right. Well, thank you guys. If you like the video, Click on that thumbs up thing and do the bell and all that good stuff. We appreciate you watching. Thanks for watching Ron Line Report with this man, George Farah, and we'll see you next time. Take care, brother.